me up if you can, because uh, you'll want to see some of the detailed stuff we're talking about here. Okay? All right. Um, let's, we're going to talk about this region of the body, the hips and the femur and stuff like that, okay? Yeah? So let's, let's review some stuff about the hips and the, and the femur and all that good stuff. And I think I'm going to bring you guys in closer. Oh, yeah. Okay, I like this. Okay. Yeah! I feel like I've just invited you into my living room. We're all like close in here. Okay, so this is the backside of our skeleton. Which, by the way, hold on a second. Let's go out for just one second. Let's, let's, let's review a couple of directional terms because they seem to be an issue. Um, by the way, I saw some mistakes in the homework that delighted me, however. Delighted me. And I'll explain why in a second. Um, Miss, Miss Petrie. Miss Petrie, can you point superiorly for me? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I love that. Uh, Miss Stanley, can you point superiorly for me? But I have to be able to see you. Thank you. Miss Cooper, can you point superiorly for me? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Miss Harper, can you point inferiorly for me? Yes, thank you. Miss Moore, can you point inferiorly for me? <clears throat> but you have to turn on the camera, Miss Moore. Take granola out of your mouth. Miss Moore, are you there? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. There. Point. Why well, my head was today? Okay, what? Point inferiorly for me. Not superiorly, thank you. In, that's superior, that's yeah. inferior. Yeah, inferior is less than, so down. Cool, thank you. Uh, Ms. Torres, can you point superiorly for me? Can you point inferiorly for me? Can you point laterally for me? Yes. Can you point medially for me? Yeah, towards the midline, thank you. Well done. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Ms. Yanez, can you point superiorly, inferiorly, laterally, medially? I like how she did that. That was really helpful. Yeah. Can you point anteriorly? Yes. Posteriorly? Thank you very much, ma'am. Ms. Hunter. Can you point anteriorly for us? Anteriorly. Eh. Hold on. Try one more time, because I'm just trying to analyze what I'm seeing here. Yeah, we see you waving. Point anteriorly. Um, so anterior is like front of my body, yeah? Yeah, so point towards <laughs> us. So, huh? po so point towards us. Oh, towards you. Okay. <laughs> right? You're pointing towards the front. So, yeah. point posteriorly. Like the back of me? Yeah. <laughs> back there. Uh, point superiorly. Up? Yep. Inferiorly. Yeah. Laterally. That's inward, right? No, inward. outward. Outward. Oh, outward, lateral, yes. Yeah. Think of lateral movements. When people do lateral movements, they're going to the outside. Yeah, cool. And and medially. Medial is inward. Yep, means going towards the midline. Yep. Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Miss Belotic. Miss Belotic, will you point superiorly? Uh -huh. that, I think you just did it. But I can barely see you. Thank you. Will you point inferiorly? 
Yeah. Right. Wait, I can't yeah, see. You're behind me, right? No, that's posterior. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Miss um, Belotic, let me use you as an example because lots of people have a hard time with it. Don't feel bad. When something is superior, it is better than anything else, right? This is a superior class. You are a superior person. And therefore, superior means up, above. So, superior yeah. is up. Yeah. When something is an inferior product, like I wouldn't buy that car, it's inferior to the one I have, that's below, right? Mm -hmm. Some people refer to their bottom as their posterior. It's your backside, right? Posterior mm -hmm. is back, anterior is front, because A mm -hmm. comes first. Cool. All right, so point superiorly. Good. Point inferiorly. Thank you. Point anteriorly yes point posteriorly yes <laughs> point laterally yes point medially thank you ma'am it's a pleasure <laughs> okay so everybody the mistake I saw in a couple of homeworks that I loved was that when I asked what was the most superior um, of the deep six muscles, which means what's the one that's the top most? The answer is piriformis, but some people put gemellus superior. Now, I love that mistake because it meant they knew what superior meant. They, they knew. By the way, gemellus superior is superior to gemellus inferior. That doesn't mean it's superior to everything. It's just superior to the other gemellus. That's where the name comes from. But I like that kind of mistake because somebody is using the word superior correctly. Does that make sense? Okay. We'll get to that again, but I just wanted to explain. So those of you, there was a couple of you actually that made that type of mistake. My hat's off to you. You got it, you got it wrong, but you got, you got a lot right. You were thinking, and that actually makes me happier than getting it right. Um, okay. Let's go back to the bones of the hip and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um... Mr. Kandaris, what bone is this? Femur. Femur. Yeah. Mr. Kandaris, what bone is the largest, strongest bone in your body? Femur. Yeah, you're darn right. Yeah, everybody, you almost never hear about these getting broken except in like car accidents. They're very hard to break. They're really powerful. Cool. That's your femur. Okay. Let's bring you guys even in closer. Boom. Good. Okay. This, let's, actually, let's take this apart. Sorry. Okay. Come on. There. Yep. So, Miss Nguyen. Yes. This ball-like thing is what fits inside your hip, because your hip is a ball and socket joint. What do we call this part of the femur? Hep. Yes! Very good. Everybody, this is the head of the femur. It looks like a head, and it's the head of the femur. You will never see it in your lifetime, except maybe on a video of a hip replacement. It's inside the hip deeply. Yes. You've got a big bump on the lateral side of your femur. Miss Nguyen, do you know what this big bump is called? Super important. You can feel this on people. What? Get the chalk get chitter. Wow. Uh, Miss Nguyen, you're amazing. Yes, it is the greater trochanter. Miss Nguyen, if this is the greater trochanter, what's this yes. little one down here called? Uh, left trochanter. Lesser trochanter. Greater trochanter, lesser trochanter. If you guys rub the outside of your hips, below your hip bones, you'll feel this. This is your greater trochanter. You won't feel this one. This is your lesser trochanter. Yep. There is a crest that runs between the two of them. It's very hard to see on the video, but, but the greater trochanter kind of has a, a ridge that runs down to the lesser trochanter right here. Uh, Miss Nguyen, do you know what this ridge is called? Neck. Oh, no. This is the neck. This is the okay. neck. This ridge right here, do you know what it's called? It's between the uh, two, two trochanters. Inter intertrochanteric. Yeah. Intertrochanteric ridge or crest. Yeah. 
Very good. It means the, the ridge between the trochanters, intertrochanteric crest. This is important because we're about to learn about a whole bunch of muscles that attach right in here. Yeah. And that's why I'm going over this with everybody, okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Young. That was fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Miss Montreal, yes, ma'am. So, just because you're talking about this, when somebody has a hip replacement, what are they actually replacing? No, great question. So, um, so this hole here is called the acetabulum. And it's covered with, it's covered with a, uh, a really actually beautiful uh, cartilage that's kind of bluish and helps stuff slide around in there. They will often replace this with kind of a plastic sleeve. Okay? And I'm going to mute you while I'm talking, or mute yourself while I'm talking just because I'm getting a lot of background noise from you. Thanks. And you can pop back on if you need to. Anyway, uh... They, they'll, they'll put a new little cup in here, but that's not the important part. They will actually saw this off at the neck. They literally pull this out of somebody, which is not easy to do. Um, they saw this off the neck. They screw a new ball in that's plastic and with a big screw, and they screw it down into the bone. And then they pop it back in. And your lateral hip rotators, the six we're going to learn about today, are some of the things that help hold it in place. Because they're kind of like the rotator cuff muscles for your hip. Yeah. So that's what they do, though. They, they saw this off. They screw a new ball in. Because it's usually this area that's gotten worn down. And they put it back together. It's crazy. Yeah. Do you have a question about them, Ms. Petrie? You looked very inquisitive there. No? Okay. Okay. Good. All right, thanks, Ms. Montreal. I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, hop back on, please. Uh, Ms. Felix Osuna. What bone is this? The femur. Thank you. What part of the femur is this? That's the head of the, yes. Yep. What part is this? The neck. Yes. And by the way, guys, in a way, in a way, you can get to the neck. You can kind of feel around this this gap here in somebody's hip if you're in really deep. You're not actually going to hit it, but you can kind of feel this. Um, what is this big bump on the lateral side of the hip called, Ms. Felix Osuna? The uh, greater trochanter. Yep, you said it perfectly right. Greater trochanter. What's this little bump called? The lesser trochanter. And what's the what's this thing between the two called? Um, inter Inter what? Intervertebral? No, but you got the right idea though. Intertrochanteric. Intertrochanteric. Ridge or crest? I don't know what your book calls it, by the way. Anybody see it in their book? I don't remember if it's red ridge or crest. To be very honest with you, mm -hmm. you would think your anatomy teacher would know. It's the ridge between the two trochanters. Anyway, that was good, Miss Felix Osuna. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to put this back in here. All right. Okay. Uh, Miss Intertrochanteric Line? Oh, wow. Okay. I like Ridge better. But anyway, Intertrochanteric Line or Ridge. Anyway, Miss Hanson, hi. You got your coffee, right? Yes. Good. I feel like we're going to need it. Okay. So, what bone is, what, oh, you can't see right now, but what bone is, is this, this bone? Thank you. Um, and what kind of socket is this? A ball and socket? Ball and socket. It's the best example of a ball and socket in the body because there really is a socket. Yeah. Well said. Um, and if I hit the outside of somebody's hip, here, not the hip bones up here, but the outside of their leg here, and I hit this bump here. What's this bump called? The greater can <laughs> greater greater tro tro canter canter yeah tro canter greater good tro canter. yeah um by the way everybody 
little side note, just a little side note. I was talking about tight IT bands yesterday. If you've got a tight IT band, this greater trochanter will actually rub against it when somebody's running and it'll get irritated right here. That's why sometimes we have to loosen up IT bands. It's one of the reasons. Anyway, okay. So let's talk about the hip bones. All right, Miss Hanson, you're not off the hook yet. This, these are the hips. How many bones make up the hip bone? Three. Yes, thank you. This this top one up here, what's that called? Oh gosh, I don't remember. Ilium. Uh, the ilium. Yeah, ilium, that's it. Oh, the ilium. Which we'll call this like the iliac crest, things like that, but we call this the iliac crest because this is the ilium. Okay. Ilium? What's the one in back called, you know? By the way, probably nobody in the class does. Don't feel bad. Ischium? The ischium, yeah. And you probably remember this one up here, this part up here. Because um, it's, it's your, it's your uh, pubis. Oh, yeah, pubis. All right. So what was this one? The ilium. Cool. What's this one back here? Ischium, and what's this one up here? Pubis. Pubis, cool. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see. Miss, Miss Giannis. Miss Giannis, what's this triangular bone here called? Uh, your sacrum. It is your sacrum. And what's this big bone up here called? Um, is that your ilium? It is your ilium. Excellent. So this is your sacrum. This is your ilium. Hey, what's this little joint here called? Right in between the sacrum and the ilium. Take a guess. Sacral... Iliac joint? <laughs> yeah, Miss Giannis, that was 100% correct, and I don't think you knew it, right, in a way? So what Miss Giannis did is my favorite thing in the whole world, and it's what I want you to all do from this class. She didn't memorize, but she did remember that Tapscott said we essentially name joints by the things that come together, right? And so she just changed, you know, sacrum to sacro, because that's how they all do it. And, and she changed ilium to iliac, sacroiliac joint. Some people call this the SI joint. And they'll talk, chiropractors all the time talk about your SI joint being, you know, being out. By the way, super important joint, right? Because your entire upper body connects to your entire lower body via the sacroiliac joint. Thank you, Ms. Giannis. It's really good. Awesome. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the deep six lateral hip rotators. So let's remember first, by the way, where they are. Let's remember a couple things. Hold on. Boom. Let's remember first that Miss Petrie, this is a big leg here. This is just the left leg. This is the posterior side, it's the back side. So we're looking at half of somebody's bottom, basically. What muscle is this, Miss Petrie? Piriformis. This this big muscle is the piriformis. No, that's the gluteus maximus. Thank sorry. you. <laughs> it's all right. Sorry, I'm sorry for making fun of you. It was just so cute. Yes, this is the gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. Yeah. We're gonna. Yeah. Take this off, everybody. Off. Look how thick this thing is. It's big. This is what you press Real through. Butt. Yeah. And by the way, this is a, a butt without any adipose tissue, right? What's adipose tissue? Fat. Fat. So, 
yeah, and there's nothing wrong with fat. There's nothing wrong with adipose, right? But like, this isn't my butt, right? There's going to be some fat on top of this. So, so some butts were going through that much, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Just letting you know, like, you're going through a lot of tissue. That's my point. That's my point. Um, and the muscles we're going to talk about live in this space underneath the glutes. And I want you to see something. This is my fist, and I am touching all six lateral hip rotators right now. I'm, I'm covering them. They're not here. They're not here. They're not down here. Right there, that hits all six. That's about the size of the area that we are talking about today. However, it is an area that goes over the sciatic nerve, and we really care about it. And these muscles kind of act like the la like the sh rotator cuff muscles of your shoulder, kind of give integrity to the to the ball and socket joint there, um, but they're in your hip. So that's what we're talking about. So let's come back to our friend and your friend, the skeleton. Okay. Do 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 do. Cool. All right. Now, uh, where am I? Miss Stanley, what muscle is known as possibly pinching the sciatic nerve? Um, wasn't it the piriformis? It is the piriformis, thank you. All right, everybody. Your book says that the piriformis actually attaches to the anterior side of the sacrum. What does anterior mean, uh, Ms. Harper? What does anterior mean? Front. Front. So even though we're on the back side, the piriformis does not hook onto the sacrum. It hooks on underneath the sacrum, which is the front of it, actually. So it's actually underneath here. Let me get a better, my tape doesn't work that way, so. But we're going to kind of put it that like that. It's not twisted. And it attaches to the top of this bump here, right? It attaches to the top of this bump. And Miss Moore, what's this bump called on the femur? This big bump on the outside called? Uh, greater throat cancer. Miss Moore, that was 100% perfect. Thank you. It is called the greater trochanter. Boom. That is the piriformis. Now, this next part is very important. You can all find the piriformis very easily because something really neat happens here. If you find the edge of anybody's sacrum right here, it goes diagonal. And you can find the edge of people's sacrums. That's easy, right? You kind of go around, you kind of feel where they're their buns are, and you kind of go right here, and you're right by the gluteus maximus here, and you push off the edge of the sacrum, and you can find the angle of it. And then you can find the greater trochanter, because it's a bump on their hip, right? They make the letter T. So, I mean, I can dead on hit this on anybody going through their glutes, because I know if I find the edge of your, th of your sacrum, and I find your greater trochanter, look at the letter we made here with this red line. That's the letter T. Just, this is not a muscle, but it's just making my point. That's the letter T. That's, this is the piriformis. I can have all this muscle on top of it. I know that if I find this edge here, this thing here, that I'm going to pu push in and hit the piriformis. Right? Yes. Super duper important. Because that's a muscle you want to be able to find. Because you will have people come to you with sciatic problems all the time. In fact, just yesterday in my meeting, my boss's boss said, um, I'm having problems with sciatica. And we made a video yesterday, I'll show it to you guys later, it's goofy, of how to do a sciatic stretch. My other boss and I did. Um, so this is a super important thing to be able to find is the piriformis. And it goes from the edge, it's actually the anterior edge, the front of the sacrum, but it goes from the edge of the sacrum over to the greater trochanter. And you can find the sacrum and you can find the greater trochanter every time. Yeah. 
So next thing, what was Ms. Torres, what are the two most palpable, two easiest to find, two most superficial, whatever you want to call it, of the deep six muscles? Can you, oh, okay, uh, the paro, paro for, I can't say it, paro, piriformis, piriformis. yeah, or what is it, piriformis, piriformis, yeah, pure, pure, piriformis, yeah. and then the quadratus, what is it, it's a four-sided muscle fat on the femur, quadratus what, Um, quadratus means four-sided, that's good. Found on the femur. So would it be called quadratus um, humoris? I don't know. Quadratus spinous? Quad, but let's see, it's found on the femur. Maybe I should put the word no. femur in there somewhere. Hmm. Yeah. I can't really hear you. You're freaking out. <laughs> well, put the word femur in with quadratus. Quadratus femur? Femoral? Femur? <laughs> Close. Quadratus femoris. Quadratus femoris. All right, everybody. This. You said that. You said no. I didn't, I didn't hear the femoris part. Sorry. Oh, I was like, that's why I was so confused. I just said, I was like, I don't know. I don't maybe, maybe I didn't hear you or maybe you cut out. I'm very sorry. Anyway, she's right. The two most palpatable muscles are the, uh, are the piriformis and the, the quadratus femoris. Yeah? And Miss Hunter, what is the most, what is the most superior of the deep six muscles. Most superior um, of the deep six, uh, piriformis. Yeah. What is the most inferior of the deep six? Quadratus femoris. Thank you. So let me show you guys the quadratus femoris. Um, let's, sorry. Miss Montreal. What bone is this here in the back side? Um, uh, hold on. Oh. Okay, so the top is the ilium. Yep. Is that the pubis? Pubis is in front where your pubic stuff is. Oh, okay. Ischium? Ischium. She's 100% correct. Guys, you sit on your ischium. When you're sitting on a hard chair, you can feel this. In fact, some people call this the sits bone because you sit on it. This is the issue. Hey, if there's a tuberosity here, Miss Montreal, what do we call this tuberosity? Um, ischial tuberosity? 100% right. And by the way, everybody, I'm saying this, I hope you'll remember this. The ischial tuberosity is a very important tuberosity because almost all of your hamstrings attach to it. The ischial tuberosity is an extremely important tuberosity because almost all of your hamstrings attach to it. You should know what the ischial tuberosity. Oh, go ahead. What, so I think, um, that's what I was going to say. What are the muscles that are attached to the ischial tuberosity? Yeah, 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 yeah. What? So, um, oh shoot. I need something that you can see better. Hold on. You're talking about, <laughs> you're talking about what happens, this is the inside of a hip, this is kind of hard to see, but this is the ischium back here, and this is the pubis here. And so what they call, they, they call them uh, ramus, the superior ramus, which means the superior arm of the pubic bone, the inferior ramus, which is the inferior arm of the pubic bone, and then the ramus of the ischium. It's ways to name different spots on the circle. You're absolutely right. 
We're not going to get too technical there today, but you're absolutely right. Because this circle is made up of, of two bones coming together. When you were a baby, these were separate, and they came together. They kind of formed right in here. So this was a pubic bone, like half of you coming together, along with the, the ischium coming together. And so this is the arm of the ischium meets the inferior arm of the pubis. We have to call this the inferior arm of the pubis because there's a superior arm of the pubis. That answer your question, Ms. Monreal? Yes. Good. I couldn't I could remember the word. No, well, that was great. Ramus or rami mean arm. Good. Okay. So let's talk about the quadratus femoris, which is a four-sided muscle found on the femur. It attaches to the ischial tuberosity, which is the same place that all your hamstrings attach to, and it goes to the crest, the intertrochanteric crest. I'm going to remove this so it doesn't confuse us. Yep. Now, You have a gemellus superior and a gemellus inferior, and they are essentially found in here. They actually hook inside here, kind of like this, on the medial side of the greater trochanter. Boom. It's probably a terrible, let me use a different color. They kind of stick inside here. Boom. Your book will get real specific about where they stick. I don't care so much. The fact is they go over to the, essentially over to the greater trochanter, just the inside of it. But they're right here. Gemellus superior is on top of the gemellus inferior. It's not on top of the piriformis. It's, it's because there's two gemelluses. Superior, in, I'm sorry, superior, inferior. Does that make sense? I hope. This next part is really confusing. You've also got an obturator internus and externus. This hole here, this hole here that Miss Monreal just asked about is called the obturator foramen. Anybody remember what foramen means? Doesn't it mean hole? It does mean hole. You've got foramens all over your body. This is the obturator hole, <laughs> obturator foramen. And so you've got an obturator internus muscle and an obturator externus muscle. They're named by where they attach. The internus actually attaches, by the way, this hole is covered up with fascia and things like that. It's not just an empty hole in your body. The, let me get a different color tape here. The obturator internus actually hooks inside here on this hole and on the fascia of this hole. And it wraps around here. I just tore it. Poor, poor obturator. Turn this. Anyway, it wraps around here and it too attaches on over here. Kind of like that. And then you have an obturator externus, which there's an outside to this hole. And it, you can't see it, but it, it attaches in here and kind of comes over to this thing too. Now, you might feel a little lost right now. It doesn't matter, actually, if you're, if you're lost at this point, because what I really want you to remember is the obturator internus, obturator externus, gemellus superior and gemellus uh, inferior all live right here. Look how tiny they must be. That's just two fingers of mine. That's all it is. I care about all the lateral hip rotators. When I'm working them, I've usually got my four fingers in like this. I'm hitting all of them. I don't care which ones I'm on, to be honest with you. But I need to be able to find them. Right? I need to be able to find them. And you can. Because you can find the edge of the sacrum, and you can find the greater trochanter, and that lets you find the piriformis. And you can find the ischial tuberosity. You guys have run into it before, I hope, when you're rubbing hamstrings. I hope when you have you run up and right by the bottom of somebody's bottom, Right by the bottom of their glutes, you've hit a bone. Please, somebody nod. Please, somebody tell me you've hit that bone. 
Thank you. Because you should be going all the way up because you're not rubbing the hamstrings right. Anyway, that bone, if you take it kind of over to just a couple fingers below this greater trochanter, that's the quadratus uh, femoris. And so you're in the right area here to work the deep six. And very few therapists work the deep six. Yeah. So they're all found right here underneath the glutes. So when I use a big fist on somebody's glutes, I'm kind of working their glutes. But when I go in there with my fingers and kind of try to go through the glutes and push in here and I'm wiggling the leg around, I'm trying to work the deep six, the lateral hip rotators. Can we see why they're called the lateral hip rotators? By the way, if they contract, they're going to pull the leg and it's going to want to turn out laterally. Yeah? If I grab the pockets of your pants and I pulled them, your legs would want to come out laterally. Does that make sense? That's why they're called lateral hip rotators. So if you bend a leg, I'm going to back you up now. Do, 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 do. So I often, when I have a client on the table, bend the client's leg and wiggle their leg around because it moves the lateral hip rotators underneath my fingers. You can't see it on our skeleton because our skeleton doesn't move that much, but the fact is this is called a bow and arrow move. You guys have probably been doing this in class, but you can actually wiggle in here and you can actually feel, if you get down and you can feel kind of the neck of the femur, you're down on top of all these and you are loosening them up. Yeah? Cool. So, your book's going to ask you some complicated questions about where stuff inserts and where it doesn't and all that kind of stuff. That's great. But I want you to realize where these guys live. I want you to just be able to find the piriformis and the quadratus femoris because if you can find them, you know where they live and you can work this area here. Right? And you should be able to name the deep six because people do talk about them. Although, by the way, most massage therapists can only name the piriformis. They don't even know about the quadratus femoris. Right? Who thinks they can name all six? Can I try? I would love you to try. Thank you, Ms. Monreal. Unless, unless if somebody else wants to try. Uh, probably everybody else is going to try, so. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, okay, Gamellus superior and inferior, so that's two. Yeah, I think they say Jamellus, but Gamellus is fine by me. Well, I'll say it your way if you want. No, I... Gamellus. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, Piriformis, that's three. Yes. Ar arbitrator? I don't know how to uh, say that. Obturator. Obturator. Is there more than one? Yeah. There, yep. Remember, there's, the obturator hole's got an inside hole and the outside of the hole. And one's hooked on the inside, one's hooked on the outside. Is one going to be inferior? No, because that would be down. Okay, hold on. I don't have my book in front of me, so I'm totally guessing. Okay. I love that. Arbor Just arbiturator? Obturator? Obturator. 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 Yeah. Kind of like, by the way, kind of like obturator internal and external. That's really what we're saying. But it's not that? No, but it's darn close. Okay. Well, hold on. Let's guess that I got those two words. So that's two, and then the other two, and then piriformis, so that's five. Yeah. If I would have gotten those, right? It, right. I think that's right. Yeah, okay. then you need the four-sided okay. muscle on the femur. Uh, quadratus femoris. Thank you. So it's okay, obturator, so obturator, obturator what? internus, uh, which means there's also an obturator externus. Yes. Thank you. What was the other words that you said when you were trying to give me a hint? In, internal and external. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so brave. That's when learning occurs, by the way, when you sit there and kind of dig through stuff like that. Uh, Miss Moore, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, I wanted to go, but it clicked, like, late. No, no, no. No, no, no. 
That's okay. I want you to still go. Um, what are the six deep lateral hip rotators that are found underneath the gluteus maximus uh, that essentially run from the sacrum and the ischial tuberosity and things like that over to the greater aspects of the greater trochanter? What are, what are these six muscles? The piriformis, the gemella superior and inferior, the obturator externus and wait internus and externus i don't know if i said it right you did the quadrate uh no yeah the quadratus femoris yep thank you that's perfect we'll take it okay. yep hey miss hunter what are the uh six lateral hip rotators called Shiitake. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> shiitake. I love shiitake. Obturator. Obturator internus externus. It sounds weird, so that's why I remember it. Uh, gemellus superior and inferior. Quadratus femoris and piriformis. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Miss Nguyen. Miss Nguyen. What are the yes. six lateral hip rotators? What are their names? Um, 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 you can call me back? Well, I could call you back. Can, can we try to say them right now? I'll say them with you. Or is this just a bad time? No, no. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I usually in the, the don't in the don't know how to cough. In the, I I know in the in in. Uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Let's just say all six together because everybody needs help. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say one. Just repeat what I say, okay? Yeah. All right. First, we're gonna say piriformis. So we're gonna say pier. Pier. A, uh, uh, form, form, is, is, pure a uh, form is, pure a uh, form is, bam, pure form is, cool. Yeah. Now we're, that's the most important one, by the way, because it pinches the sciatic nerve. Now we're going to say the second most important one, because we can find it, and it's at the bottom of all of them, and that is a four-sided muscle found on the femur, and that's called qua, qua, dre, Tuss. Quadratus. Yeah, quadratus. No, no, quadratus. Wait, wait, quadratus. 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 Next word we're going to say is femoris. Fem. Fem. Or. Or. Is. In. Femoris. Fem for ish. Quadratus femoris. Qua. Dre. Dre. Tus. Tus. Fem. Fem. More. More ish. Miss. Good job. Those are the two most important. Okay. Now we got four more that are between those two. And yeah. that is. Gem, Gem, L, L, Us, Us, Gemellus, Gem, L, Us, Gemellus Superior and Gemellus Inferior. So please in the same again. Gem, Gem, L, L Us, Us, Gemellus. Very good. Jamalus, now say Jamalus superior. Yeah, and a five. Say Jamalus. Jam. L. L. Us. Jam. Jam. L. Us. Superior. Superior. Yes. Now say Jam. L. Us. Jam. L. Us. Inferior. Inferior. Perfect. So, so far, Ms.
this new yen has said piriformis, quadratus femoris, gemella superior, gemella inferior. Good job. Two more, Miss New Yen. Two more. Ob. Ab. Ter. Ter. Ader. A. Ader. Good. Ob. Ab. Ter. Ader. Ader. Obturator. Abter. Ader. In. In. Turn. Turn. Us. Us. Obturator internus. Us. Yes, internus. Good. And by the way, Miss Cooper, you're right. These words are hard. Really yeah. hard. So I, I cannot have the same. Don't worry. We got one more left. One more left. Now we have an obturator externus. So ob. Ab. Ter. Ter. Ader. X. X. Turn. Turn. Us. Up. Obturator externus. Obturator Yeah. I'm clapping, by the way, and people are nodding and stuff like that because everybody in the class has a hard time saying these. It's not just you, Miss Nguyen. So what you did was amazing. Um, amazing. Amazing. Yeah, because I, I want to, uh, you know, and I hear everybody talk, but I don't know how to talk that. Yeah. And so, uh, and so, and the, I really, uh, but I really want to teach me in the same class, but I can't in the body. Yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kandaras, please tell me the name of the most superior lateral hip rotator. Um, I, uh, I know what it is, I just, I just now say it again. Uh, first the P, right? Yes! Yeah. So, uh, can you spell it? Yes, I can. But I need you to say it. <laughs> I just beat a smart ass. Uh, um, uh, P-I-R-I. That's part of it. P I R I. Yes, thank you, Miss Moore. I was talking to you, but thank you. <laughs> so, pure form is, sir. Did you hear that? Yeah. Pure form is good. Um, sir, can you tell me the name of. Of uh, which rotator, I'm sorry, yeah, which lateral hip rotator, which deep six can pinch the sciatic nerve? The, um, uh, is it the uh, obturator? No, it's the piriformis. The piriformis. Pir uh, okay. piriformis, sir. Um, can you tell me the name of the, uh, the muscle that attaches to the anterior edge of the sacrum and the superior portion of the greater trochanter? The inferior gemellus? Or the piriformis. Okay. <laughs> There's a theme here, sir. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So what is the most superior and easy to find um, uh, lateral hip rotator? Piriformis. Yes. What lateral hip rotator can pinch the sciatic nerve? The piriformis. Yes. What muscle can be found by finding the edge of the sacrum and the greater trochanter and making the letter T with it? Piriformis. Yes. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Miss... Miss Belotic. Miss Belotic, what are the names of the six lateral hip rotators? The piriformis. Super important, yeah. The 
external and internal ob obturators. Yeah. The inferior glomerulus. Yep. And the quadratus femoris. Yep. Hey, if there's an inferior gemellus, do you think maybe there's a superior gemellus? Oh yeah, and the superior gemellus. Ah, cool. Thank you. Don't be sorry. By the way, guys, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make, I mean, I am trying to make fun of you, but fun, fun. Like, I'm not, I think this stuff is hard. I'm just trying to get you thinking when I ask these kind of questions. Good job. Fantastic. Miss Hansen. What are the two most palpatable, easy to find deep six muscles? Yes. Yeah, femoris. What does quadratus femoris mean? Four headed muscle. Four heads? So it's quadriceps femoris? Because seps means heads. What? Seps means heads. So you said, when you said it's a four headed muscle, I figured that's kind of cool. I didn't realize. And what is it then? Am I saying, what is it? Quad is four. Quad is four, quadratus is four-sided, quadriceps is four-headed. And I'm making fun of you because it's a mistake everybody makes and we all need to know. Seps means heads, everybody. And so quadriceps femoris are your thigh muscles, are huge. They're four-headed muscle, quadriceps, quad four, seps heads. Quadratus is like a quadrilateral. It means four-sided. Dratus are sides. So this is quadratus femoris. Good. Okay. Very, very, this is tiny, tiny four-sided muscle, kind of like a rectangle. Quadratus morris. Cool. Um, which, uh, which deep six is most superior, Miss Hanson? Uh, piriformis. Thank you. Which uh, deep six can pinch the sciatic nerve? The piriformis. Thank you, Miss Hanson. Which deep six kind of forms the letter T between the greater trochanter and the lateral edge of the sacrum? Thank you, Ms. Hanson. Which, uh, uh, which deep six muscle is usually related to sciatic problems? Piriformis. Yes, Ms. Hanson. Which deep six can you not go a day of working massage without hearing the name of? Piriformis. Piriformis. Which deep six should everybody in this class remember forever and ever and ever Pinches the sciatic nerve, and no one here should ever forget it. Piriformis. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, what is, by the way, the most inferior of the deep six? Quadratus uh, femoris. Cool. I wanted to say, make sure I said that right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't mess you up. I was just trying to play. Um, last question, Miss Hansen. What muscles can be found between the piriformis and the quadratus femoris? You're saying it. You're saying it. You're saying it. You're, you're doing it. Obturator. Obturator, inferior, and exterior. Well, what does inferior mean? Oh, well, so superior. Obturator, superior. Obturator, and inferior, and superior. Yes, good. The other one is. It's a gem. <laughs> um, Gisellus? Gemellus? Gem Gemellus? Gemellus. Internus? Intern, and yeah. Internus. Yeah, good. Okay. Good job. Miss Nguyen, I hope you saw how hard that was for an English speaker <laughs> to say. <laughs> like, it's hard. This stuff is hard. It's yes. very hard. Yes. My English isn't good either. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, none of this is English, everybody. It's all Latin. I mean, it truly is Latin, so that's why it's hard for all of us. Um, in fact, my Spanish-speaking students do better with it than anybody because it's a Romance language, and a lot of Spanish words are Latin-based. Um, Miss Morel, you have your hand raised. Wow. So even as a Latin speaker, I suck this? <laughs> you double suck, yes. <laughs> I'm kidding, Miss Morel. Kidding. Okay, so... Um... Whenever I have a question, I always feel like I'm like, Mr. Tinapka, just like really annoying, but I have a question. Well, okay, so 
I hope. I, I want to interrupt you for just one second. I hope that everybody in the class, I think they do, your questions add depth and breadth to the discussion. I see people nodding. Like, I forget to ask things. I, you, you make me think. You make us think. And even the answers aren't even always important. It's the discussion that ensues. I like your inquisitive mind. I really appreciate it. And I actually wish you, when you asked him, you'd be like, Mr. Tapscott. That'd be great. Okay. I'm going to do that from now okay. on. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I don't understand. You've asked it a few times, and it was on the test. Like, which muscles are the easiest? What What is it called? Palpatable? Is that the word? Yeah. Okay, so of course I thought the piriformis, because that one was easy, but why is it that it's the quadratus femoris? Because I thought the other ones were like a little more superior, and I don't care that I just have to understand why. Yeah. Um, I mean, part of, uh, so, so part of this answer is lame. Part of the answer is I just know from experience they are. Right? Like, I can find them easier. I can find the quadratus femoris easier. But, um, but for one thing, quadratus femoris is easy to find because there are big, there are big roadmaps to it. There are, big, there are big things to find. You can find the ischial tuberosity in somebody's body very easily. And you can, you can find this kind of, this lower edge to the greater trochanter very easily. These other three, it, uh, these other four, it's not that you can't find them, you can't distinguish them. Okay. So if you've got you've got actually the piriformis is pretty big. The piriformis mm -hmm. is about two fingers wide, and the quadratus femoris is about two fingers wide. The other four muscles are two fingers wide, all four of them. So they're each a half a finger. And they're all mixed in there, and you just can't tell the difference. You know you're on top of all four of them, but you can't distinguish them. So maybe it's about which two muscles can you find and distinguish. And these two go off in two very different directions. And so you can find them really easily. These are all just jumbled together and shoved inside there. And they are a little bit deeper. And let me explain why they're a little bit deeper. I'm going to wheel you back over. Because I understand why you thought that, but they actually are deeper, and here's why. Okay, we got to get real close here. Do, 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 do. This, which muscle is this, Miss Montreal? Piriformis. Piriformis. Goes from the edge of the sacrum over here. Piriformis. It attaches essentially to the top of the greater trochanter. What? Can you uh, model a little more in the view of the camera? Because, like, I can't see the outside. Oh, the I'm sorry. Oh, hold on. I'm looking at the wrong camera. I've got two cameras running. It's a long story. Anyway. There. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, we'll even go down. Here we go. Let's see. There. Okay. So the piriformis goes from the edge of the, the sacrum over to the, the greater trochanter. And what muscle is this down here? On the bottom. This Montreal. Um. Well, but this is the most inferior of the deep six. Okay. Is it one of the gemellas? It's the quadratus femoris. Oh, really? See, yeah. I thought it was, I thought that one was different. So, yeah, okay, I'm glad I asked this. All right, good. I thought it was I, under I, the other one. I'm glad you asked, too. So, so this one attaches to... This ridge, this intertrochanteric ridge that's right back here, okay? These other four, just so you can see, oh, jeez, hold on. I've got, of course, I thought it would be smart to put the skeleton up on a chair on wheels. So, not the sharpest tool in the shed. All right, I'm going to have to take the leg off to show you something, but it'll be worth it. All right, so, so the piriformis attaches up here, the quadratus femoris attaches here, the other four muscles actually attach inside here, which is deeper 
than this. They're actually inside here. So you've got the quadratus kind of on top here and you've got the piriformis here. The other ones actually go inside. There's even a little fossa in here called the trochanteric fossa. It's a little hole. And one of them even attaches inside there. So they are deeper and they're really deep inside here and they're really small. And four muscles are taking up this space right here, whereas one muscle's here and the other one's here. So that's why they're harder to find. You can find all four of them easily, but it's hard to distinguish them. And I was really mistaken because I thought that the quadratus femoris was on the inside of that little groove that you just said. So I thought that that's where it attached. So yeah. that's my bad enough for that didn't make sense. No, it's not your bad at all. I think that we're all very confused. Um, but the reason I keep emphasizing everybody, the quadratus, um, the quadratus morris and the piriformis, not only are they the easiest to find, but they frame the other four muscles, right? So if you can find the piriformis and you can find the quadratus femoris, the other four live between them. They live on that pizza that was made, right? So that's why I keep emphasizing. So let me show you again. Boom. Oh, I was saying, sorry. You were going to say something? No, I just said, okay, thank you. Because oh, I have to explain. You're very welcome. I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> so keep, keep them coming. All right, everybody. Remember, if I pull off the glutes here, underneath is this massive stuff. And I admit it's probably really hard to see this from where you're at, right? But this is a sacrum here. The greater trochanter is over here. So this top, this top muscle is the piriformis. This one down here is the quadratus femoris. It's about that wide. And all four of those other muscles live right here. And this is the sciatic nerve coming out from underneath the piriformis where it can get pinched. And they all live right here. It's this tiny little spot. But this is the bottom, quadratus femoris. This is the piriformis right there. These two fingers here, quadratus femoris, piriformis right here, and the other four muscles live right in there. Gemellus superior, gemellus inferior, obturator internus, obturator externus. And I don't think, by the way, unless you have a client that objects, you should ever do a massage where you're not working the glutes and at least superficially loosening up those lateral hip rotators. Now, if you have a client that's like very nervous, don't touch my bottom, things, I, I totally get it. But through the sheet, on 99% of my clients, I'm at least loosening up gluteals because the gluteals tie into the low back. It's the largest muscle in the body. And the lateral hip rotators are underneath it. And it feels amazing. Like this should be in every one of your massages. You can argue skipping hands and arms in a massage. You can argue it. You can make a good argument, actually. But you can't argue skipping glutes. <clears throat> I mean, the hips are the center of the body. It's not a massage. Yeah, the only time I skip it is when I have a client who's really nervous and they're freaking out and, and I think it's going to make them feel violated. But that's, because that always comes first. Of course, we always respect the client. But otherwise, glutes, glutes, glutes. And I'm thinking about two layers of the glutes, right? Am I rubbing just the gluteus maximus? That's totally cool. That's important. But then sometimes I'm also going through it and trying to get down into, into lateral hip rotators. And what I'm really searching for, just so we all know, I'm really searching for this neck of the femur. I'm searching for this gap in here because I know they all attach around there. And if I find this kind of depression in, in the hip in there, that I am deep in there and I'm in the deep six. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yes. Miss Felix Osuna. Oh, no, Miss Hunter, please take it away. What's your question? Hey, all right. So, um, <laughs> I'm scared to, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. So I've been doing the glutes. I love doing the glutes. It's cool. Um, but then yesterday, Mr. Barra said that if I go too deep uh, into this like hole of some sort where the sciatic nerve is, that I could paralyze somebody. And now I'm scared. So can you, <laughs> can you, 
can you <laughs> i don't know okay so there's a, a hole or something right uh, it's like okay so the piriformis goes right over this like hole where the the uh sciatic nerve sits and so you're pressing on the piriformis it's fine to do that but if you go in too deep like with your elbow it could like harm cause harm maybe i'm saying it wrong somebody else heard this conversation as well in my class by the way, by the way, um, by the way, you can do harm. I mean, I mean, elbows, that's why we use them in karate, right? Of course you can do harm. But, but, uh, I think if you do it judiciously and you follow some of the stuff I'm going to say, you don't have anything to worry about. I'm really glad you brought it up though. You're absolutely, by the way, really quickly, um, really quickly, you can send somebody off the table with your elbow in their butt. I mean, you can... You can, if you drop an elbow into somebody's bottom and you drive it in really quickly into where these deep six are and you hit the sciatic nerve, they're going to fly off the table. I don't think you'll paralyze them. I think you're going to piss them off. Um, okay. But I'm not worried about you paralyzing them. But you go in slow and if, if yeah, if their leg goes numb or they tell you like, like that really doesn't feel right, you would stop. But I've actually never once heard of somebody having long-term damage from something like that ever. Um, but I would go in slow because it's a sensitive area once you get through the glutes. And anytime you're using something pokey in the bottom, you're going through the glutes and in, into this area. So I, I get it. Um, let me give you a couple pointers when you're working this, this stuff. Okay. So I'm going to pull you guys back in. Sorry we keep going in and out, but actually I think this is, these are great questions uh, that if you had a better teacher, I would have thought of ahead of time, but at least you're catching them now. So, mainly... Mainly, I kind of think about when I'm working the glutes in this area back here, I think about two layers. First, I kind of use my fist and my forearm and even my hands. I don't mean this in a weird way, but I'm like, this. there's a lot of meat here. to try to loosen all this up to get through it. Then I go in here with maybe an elbow, right? Uh, maybe a, I cut myself, maybe a, a finger, something like that to get into this area. But let me tell you what I'm thinking when I do it that's a little bit different. This is where your anatomy pays off. Most people, especially if you're not paying attention to my lecture, <laughs> just kind of go, well, there's something important down here. They kind of, you know, whatever. They pat around down here. But I'm looking for something very specific, even if I don't find it. I know that the piriformis actually attaches to the anterior part of the sacrum. Which means from our point of view, from our point of view, it runs under the sacrum because it's in front. So when I'm going in, I'm actually not going straight in. I'm trying to get under the sacrum. I'm actually trying to get under the sacrum. Now, I'm never going to get there. There's so much connective tissue. I'll never get there. But I'm actually kind of thinking about not going straight in, which is when you'd really hit the sciatic nerve, by the way. I'm kind of thinking about going underneath the sacrum. It's a much more effective thing to do. And this is, these are the subtle things that make one massage therapist dramatically better from another one. One massage therapist is like, oh yeah, the deep six is down here and blah, 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 blah. But they don't really know what they're doing. And they don't really remember their anatomy. Whereas you can actually find the edge of the sacrum and then try to go under it a little bit. And you're really loosening that muscle up because you're hitting right at its insertion, something like that. And you're not directly banging on the sciatica all the time. Again, I don't think you have anything to worry about. As long as you go in slow, you should never be going in fast into glutes. Anyway, but you go in slow here, you got nothing to worry about. But don't just dig straight in there because that is digging straight on the sciatic nerve. Because the sciatic nerve kind of runs down like this. Right? So, if I go in straight, I'm pushing into the sciatic nerve all the time, right? Right? But if I kind of go in like the side, if I really understand how anatomy is going, as though I'm trying to pry underneath the sacrum, which again, I'll never do. But if I'm trying to pry underneath the sacrum, I really hit the piriformis. The energy, the focus of my strike, right? It's not a strike, but the focus of my power is under here instead of directly into the sciatic nerve where I'm going to pinch it again this, against this bone and in this hole. Yeah. And so that can really, really help just kind of playing around those angles really makes a big difference, yeah? 
something to think about. I hope that answers your question, Ms. Hunter. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, uh, only to kind of go to, at an angle to direct is yeah. very helpful. Thank you. Remember, the nice thing is, remember like bottoms and hips and everything like that are this kind of round thing. We always think that we can only hit them like from one side. Hit them slightly from the side. Attack the glutes slightly from the side. You probably already are not thinking about it. You're not coming straight down on the person at the table. You're coming at the side. That's what you want to do. And you're kind of wiggling to try to pretend like you're getting underneath the sacrum there. And that'll really, um, really help find it. And uh, Miss Cooper, it can be hard to find the sacrum. One of the keys is you find you 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 find you hit it on purpose. So I'll I'll hit it direct. Like there's a flat tailbone here on everybody, and I'll find this. And then if I slide over, eventually it gets slightly softer. Just slightly, by the way, because there's so much connective tissue here. That's when I know I'm at the edge of the sacrum. But you can find the sacrum because it's this big flat bone back here. And so I'll hit it directly. I don't mean hit it with an elbow, but I'll, I'll gently place an elbow on it. And I'll be like, well, that's a bone. Wiggle over. That's still a bone. Oh, is got a little softer. What? The sacrum is, is between your buns. It is an uh, upside down triangle that connects your two hip bones together and it's between your buns. And right, I, I'm sorry for being so graphic, everybody, but it really, it, it'll help you, Miss Cooper. This is, this is where your butt crack starts, right about here. Right where your coccyx is. So if we're draping really well, we should be draping down to here, right before your, your natal cleft, they call it, but your butt crack starts right here. And anyway... It's right back here between between your buns. Your buns look like this. And your sacrum is the spot between them. Otherwise, your buns would look all like one thing. The spot right between them. And it's what creates that kind of upside-down triangle because it's an upside-down triangle. And it is your last vertebrae in a way. So when you're going down the back, it's right after the last bump. It's this thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Play with it today. Have people help you. People... You can ask people on the table, like, hey, what do you think I'm on right now? You know? Okay. Now, everybody, I will tell you what I am careful about, just because it feels invasive when I'm working on somebody, is when you've got your elbow down in here, you can hit this ischial tuberosity here, and that really hurts them. And you don't want to go over the ischial tuberosity, because now you are kind of in their bottom. Like, nobody's going to like that. So I am staying over here, but that's why I come from the side. Not directly aside, but at a 45 degree angle. Come at a 45 degree angle and you'll be in the right spot to play with this stuff. These are great questions. Great questions. And by the way, when we teach this stuff in like continuing ed to advanced massage therapists, we still, they just have to play with it, right? Because everything you're feeling doesn't look like this, right? It's got layers and layers of fascia and muscle over it and all that kind of stuff. you got to just play around with it and be like, oh, that kind of seems like it. That's the best you can do. You get better and better the more you, you do it. And everybody's body is so different to this day. To this day, I work on somebody, I'm like, is that the greater trochanter? That's why I start wiggling stuff around. Well, it moves when I wiggle the leg. Yeah, it might be the greater trochanter, that kind of thing. Okay? I have a question. Yes, Ms. Torres, what is your question? Um, so I have a question about the sciatic nerve. Okay. We probably talked about it, but I don't know, maybe I forgot. That's okay. So is so when they when people say I have that problem, is literally the um paraphermis pinching it? That's it? No. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry if I misled that. I wanted you all to realize that could be okay, one of the... I was like, what? what you? Okay. It could be. It could be. If you're having a very lucky day in massage and they're having a very lucky day as a client, the piriformis could be tight and you loosen it up and that's it. Their sciatica is better. Uh, and by the way, everybody, it won't happen right away. And here's what I mean by that. Nerves are like people. And once they get irritated, it takes them a while to calm down. All right? So I'll use Miss Yanas as an example. Miss Yanas and I get in a lot of fights together because she's a very difficult person. And but we make up afterwards. But even after we make up, we're both a little irritated for a while, and it takes a couple of days to cool off before we're back to normal. Nerves are the same way. So if you release the piriformis, you stop the thing irritating the nerve, but the nerve's still irritated for a while. And so 
tell that to the client too. They'll be like, I think it's a little bit better. Be like, sleep on it because tomorrow it's going to probably be a lot better because I think we've released the pinching and it's, it, it, it now needs to just kind of become unirritated, if that makes sense. Now, the piriformis is one possible culprit of what could be pinching the sciatic nerve. But lots of stuff could be pinching it, right? General tension in the gluteal region could be pinching it. It really might not exactly be pinched in that area at all. It might be pinched a little bit up where it forms, up in the sacrum, or up in the lower back. It might not even be exactly the sciatic, by the way, because lots of people are like, oh, I've got sciatic, and they don't. They've actually got a femoral nerve pinched, right? Sciatic pain is usually really running down the back side of your leg, because that's where the sciatic feeds. Stuff in the front side of your leg usually comes from your lower back, instead of your sacrum, which is where the sciatic nerve forms. Do we remember like how your spine was, right everybody? Your spine and the nerves that come off it, what they feed? I hope we do. Yes, Miss Cooper, what? The, the brain? <laughs> yes, they do, I'm sorry. Yes, what? I mean, they, they feed, but oh, I, meant, okay. I meant what each section feeds. So, for example, the brain is up here, yeah? The spine is down here, it's got this huge thick thing of nerves coming down here. And then there's nerve plexes that come off here that run like roots to every part of the body. The nerve plexes that come off the neck go to your what? Who can tell me? Your arms. Thank you, Ms. Jonas. By the way, what she just said is probably one of the most important things to remember as a massage therapist, because Ms. Jonas knows when somebody comes in and says, my arm hurts, Ms. Giannis will rub their arm, but she will remember this fact and she will also rub their neck because they might not have an arm problem. They might have a pinched nerve up in their neck that feeds the arm. Yeah. Whereas another therapist will work on their arm all day long and they might have a neck problem. So this is an important thing to remember. Ms. Giannis, if it comes off the thoracic region in here, what do those nerves feed? Uh, like your chest and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, they feed your thoracic region. They reach around in front and feed that. If they come off your lumbar region, where do they go? Your legs. Your legs, your front of your legs. The lumbar nerves come down here and go in front. The sacral nerves run down the back. So if somebody has leg pain, by the way, I can't emphasize this enough. I keep saying it, but, but please listen to me. If somebody has leg pain, they might have a leg problem, but they also might have a pinched nerve. If I have leg pain in front of my leg, it could be problems in my low back, my lumbar region. If I have leg pain in the back of my leg, it could be from a sciatic nerve coming off my sacrum. And this is why we rub all this stuff. So neck goes to arms, thoracic goes to thoracic. <laughs> Lumbar goes to the front of the legs, sacrum goes to the back of the legs. And if you kind of look at it, it kind of makes sense. Especially with the sound effects. That's very important. Yes. Cool? Super important stuff, everybody. Um, let's take a break. Let's take a 10-minute break. 